back on 39 News. Gunmen burst into a home in the Sugar Lake subdivision in Sugar Land, tie a family up and rob them. Tonight, those robbers are on the run. And as police search for the gunmen, the neighborhood is on edge, fearing the crooks could come back. 39's Myra Moreno has been following the story. Myra, do police know why this family was even targeted? Hey, Mia, they don't know that for sure. Right now, police investigators in Sugarland are trying to get in touch with other police departments in the area to see if these men can be linked to other crimes in the area. Inside this two-story home in Sugarland, an elderly couple and their two daughters were victims of a home invasion. It happened last night at the 1100 block of Sugar Lakes. They did have handguns, and when they were inside, they tied up all four of the occupants. Captain Michelle Allen says the four men wore masks. They kicked in the back door and stormed in, surprising the victims. The robbers tied up the family. And then ransacked the, uh, the house. The men searched for money and took off with about $1,000. Eventually, the father got free and called police. We always strive for is to prevent that type of activity from happening. Neighbors quickly found out about the crime through an e-police alert, a new system that notifies residents of crime in their area. People can sign up for the free service online. It also allows them a way to communicate with the police officers when they have this kind of activity to come up to to have those questions and answers about what can I do to prevent myself from being a victim. Luckily, the victims of this home invasion were not physically harmed, but it has definitely made people in this subdivision more vigilant. If you have any information on this crime, you are asked to call the Sugarland Police Department. And if you at home would like to find out more about these e alerts you heard in the story, you can log on to our website to find out how you can sign up. We're live in the newsroom tonight. Myra Moreno, 39 News. A Montgomery County man is accused of stealing up to 20 bronze vases from grave sites. The vases were taken from the Conroe Memorial Cemetery on FM 1314. Law enforcement officers found the vases yesterday when they arrested 52 year old Paul McKinnon. The vases were discovered in the back of McKinnon's pickup truck. It's believed they were stolen over the weekend. Some were found in pieces. There was one that was uh, definitely cut up. There was um, uh, it was it was cut in several pieces and uh, it, it was designed to try to obscure what, what it uh, originally was. The Conroe Memorial Cemetery has offered to replace the brass vases that were lined with precious copper. McKinnon is now charged with theft of precious metals, which is a state jail felony. Authorities think he planned to sell the vases at a scrap metal yard. The Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office has issued an Amber Alert for a Richmond teenager. That's just one of the top local stories we are following this evening. 39 Steve Simon joins us once again with the very latest. Steve? That's right, Mia. We've been hearing about this now the last few hours. The Amber Alert was issued just a few hours ago for 16 year old Alyssa Redfield. Now here's a look at the missing teenager. She was last seen late last night at her home at the Pecan Grove subdivision. Now detectives believe Redfield is with this man, 36 year old David Caron, whom she met on the Internet. Their last known location was in the area of Bourne, Texas. That's just near San Antonio and detectives believe they may be headed out of state. They are said to be traveling in a 1995 silver Ford Aspire with a hatchback and the Oregon license plate 884 A G Z. If you have any info on this, please call the Fort Bend County Crime Stoppers at 281 342 tips. The Harris County District Attorney's Office has cleared Metro of any wrongdoing. This following a five month investigation into allegations that Metropolitan Transit Authority administrators illegally destroyed public documents. The DA's investigation began back in March, you may remember, after Houston attorney Lloyd Kelly filed that lawsuit accusing Metro and several of its top officials of shredding documents sought in an open records request. Now, Metro has since adopted a new records retention policy and a new email management strategy. They are also hiring an outside law firm, and they have hired a law firm to conduct a review of internal controls. That's what we're following for now. Steve Simon, 39 News. All right, Steve, thanks so much. Starting today, parents in the Fort Bend ISD can pick up applications for free or reduced price meals. The applications are for the upcoming school year. Kids who qualify can buy lunch for just 40 cents and breakfast for 30 cents. For more information on the free and reduced price meal programs, log on to our website, 39online.com, and click the Go button. We're trying to make it all easier for you. Well, many senior citizens are struggling to eat in this tough economy. That's why the Houston Housing Authority and the Houston Food Bank have teamed 
teamed up to provide food for the elderly. Now, various housing authority communities will receive a box of food once a month. Today, 100 residents at the historic Oaks of Allen Parkway Village Apartments received a box containing canned goods, cheese, and more. There's a party downtown celebrating tomorrow's MLS All-Star Soccer Game. Tonight's event includes a celebrity soccer match. 39 Sports Director Jorge Vargas is live at Discovery Green to tell us more. He's kicking it off this evening. Hey there, Jorge. Yeah, unfortunately, Mia, I don't get to kick it off. They didn't ask me to be in the celebrity tournament. I'll deal with that issue in a minute. But downtown is definitely taking an MLS feel. We're here at Discovery Green where it's turned into one big soccer complex here. And uh, John Schuler joining me here with the Houston Dynamo, the marketing director, and you guys helped put all this together, right? Yeah, we sure did. We wanted to have a free event to kind of highlight everything that's going on here in Houston surrounding this whole week in the All-Star Game and the excitement. So uh, we wanted to make sure that people that can't get into the game tomorrow, they'll have something else where they can enjoy the week as now, well. Now today, right now, we're getting ready to see in about uh, an hour and a half or so, so people can't get out. A seven-on-seven seven match with some All-Stars. Kind of give us an idea of some of these All-Stars all -stars and celebrities that'll be playing. Yeah, we have some soccer legends here. Alexi Lawless, uh, Eric Winalda, some of those guys are coming in. Well, on the female side, Brandy Chastain will be here, um, coming out here and playing. And they're teaming up with some other local form, former athletes and celebrities. So uh, Marcus Coleman, some of the other guys around here. Yeah, some former Texans yeah. around here, Corey Bradford as well. And I understand you definitely have a hip hop attitude going yeah, around here. Yeah, there's some uh, Fife is there, and we got uh, Slim Thug and some other guys that are uh, really big here on the Houston scene that are here playing in the game. So it's exciting. So. All right, now right now there's definitely it's about uh, probably a thousand or a little bit more it's growing as we've been sitting here the match starts at seven o'clock can you tell us how much excitement it's been for the dynamo obviously mls all-star game here but for the dynamo what this is all meant yeah this has been a great time for us you know we really wanted to have this game this year uh, we kind of lobbied to get them here and of course we were uh, really instrumental in getting Manchester United, the biggest opponent in the world, to come here and play. So we really wanted to establish Houston as a soccer town and as not only here in the state but in the world, uh, which would help us get the USA bid here in, two th in the 2022 maybe or something for uh, the World Cup. So hopefully we can make that happen. Well, that would definitely be nice as well. Real quick, what's happening tonight and then tomorrow events people can get to if they can't get out here today? Yeah, absolutely. The weather's holding off for us tonight, so we're here at Discovery Green for the AT&T All-Star Soccer Jam. The Celebrities are just a few minutes away, so they're going to sign autographs for a little while, come out here and have the match, and there's uh, lots of other soccer activities going on here. And tomorrow, obviously, is the game, and a few hours before the game, we have a soccer celebration going there with a lot of soccer activities and fun outside uh, Reliant Stadium. So. Sounds good. No question about it. John, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, Mia, I tell you what, if you don't like soccer, you can definitely get in the mood at all the events they have around here. They've done a great job tonight. A big party at Zaza will be live there tonight, Mia. All right, we're looking forward to seeing you then. Thanks so much, Jorge Vargas. And keeping with sports, we heard some possibly disturbing news for Houston Rockets fans. All-star center Yao Ming says he may quit basketball after next season. That's if, if he doesn't fully recover from his foot injury. In published comments to Chinese state media yesterday, Yao sounded far from optimistic about his future. Yao missed last season with the Rockets while recovering from foot surgery. He now says he doubts he'll play at the 2012 Summer Olympics in London. Josiah Jackson is truly a miracle baby. Listen to this. The 17-month-old from North Carolina was recently standing up on a chair and fell. The back of his head hit a pressure washer and a metal rod from the device ended up lodging in his skull. It's difficult to hear, but the toddler was rushed to the hospital where surgeons did not have good news for his family. And he didn't trickle coat anything. He said, uh, Mr. Jones, more than likely, if we pull the screw out of his head, he's going to bleed out and bleed to death. So when he said that, man, I just lost it. Oh my goodness, can't even imagine. Well, it took a lot of prayer, but doctors managed to remove the rod out of Josiah's head. For now, he shows no signs of any long-term damage. I told you he's a miracle baby, and his family says they are just counting their blessings. All right, now to some very hot video. A cross-dressing robber is today's hot video that's all just a mess, really. Dude looks like a lady. Police say this man with a goatee dressed is a woman wearing a blonde wig, a sweater with fake breast, and robbed a Pennsylvania bank. Before knocking off the bank, though, he shoplifted a BB gun from a Kmart that he used in the heist. Did you steal that gun? No, I did not. His money that had the ink on it started falling out from underneath his uh, shirt. The wig was protruding from his pants pocket, and uh, they also recovered the gun, which was in his waistband. He's just one mean-looking lady. 
No, he didn't get far from the bank because the money bag he ran away with was armed with a dye pack. It exploded, giving police an easy target to spot and arrest. The ultimate summer escape to Costa Rica continues where the surf's always up. We're hanging tin with a pro surfer for tips on how to melt away the pounds while visiting paradise.